Good day, everybody. My name is Mike Alcock, Managing Director of GOMO Learning. I'm delighted to invite you to today's webinar. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world today. Um, we'll be starting very shortly. We've still got people um, signing into the webinar, so we're just going to give everybody a couple of minutes longer just to make sure everyone gets in. Um, perhaps I could just ask if you're in the webinar now uh, to confirm that you could hear my voice. Would some of you just mind raising your hands with the raise hand icon? There's a few hands going up. Thank you very much. That's great. And also, perhaps, just to make sure that everyone's familiar with um, the webinar functionality, you'll find a questions panel in the webinar software. Perhaps you could just type in where you are in the world today and maybe what's the weather like, just so we can see uh, what sort of things we've got going on. And also just make sure that the questions panel uh, is accessible to everybody and that you can all use it. So please feel free to type in where you're dialing in from today and what the weather's like in your location. Um, so we've got, uh, well I'll start with myself, my name's Mike, I'm in Brighton on the south coast of England and the cloud that we've had for most of the day is disappearing so it's nice and sunny. Uh, my colleague Tom who's going to be running you through the um, webinar today is in Atlanta and uh, last time I spoke to him it was about 23 degrees, so it's uh, very nice and warm there. Uh, we've got, who else have we got? Michael is in Los Angeles, California, fantastic. Um, Linda is in Denver, Colorado, oh, I love Denver, I was there last year, beautiful city. Hailstorms, okay. And Mary Armstrong says, hello, can't hear you yet. I wonder why not. It looks like everybody else can hear us. Can you all hear us? Okay. Uh, I've got a few questions. Tom, just checking. Can you hear me okay? I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Mary, uh, maybe it's the volume on your computer or something like that. Uh, yes, Tanya, thank you. Tanya can hear us. So it sounds like, Mary, it might be something at your end. Um, do apologize. Hopefully that will sort itself out. So um, anybody else that's just joining, um, uh, we're just finding out where people are from and uh, what the weather's like in their bit of the world. So if you uh, would like to test the question functionality, if you wouldn't mind just typing in where you are today and what the weather's like just while we're waiting for the last few people to come in uh, before we make a start. Hello Carol, uh, it's Mike here from Goma, I think we've spoken on chat a few times. Uh, Carol is in New Jersey. Uh, Danielle is in Los Angeles. Lan is in Sacramento and it's sunny. And Leslie is from New Paltz, it's a new place on me, but it looks like it's in New York, and it's raining. Um, well, I grew up in Manchester, England, and believe me, it rains all the time there, so I feel your pain. All right, it's um, one minute past the top of the hour, we've still got a few people uh, coming in. So we're going to give it one or two minutes longer, and then I will hand over to Tom Tate. Uh, who looks after GOMO in the USA, and Tom will take us through today's webinar, which is all about micro-learning your new sales strategy. So this is the uh, second webinar that we've run on this topic today. It's a very popular topic. We had to run two webinars. Um, we can't unmute you, Mary, I'm afraid. Um, so Mary's just asking if we could unmute the sound. You should be able to hear us, but we can't unmute your speakers, otherwise we just get a ton of feedback, I'm afraid. Um, but you should all be able to hear me uh, through that. It's like Mary um, is having some problems. I'm just going to click on your name, Mary, and just see if we can work out if there's anything different. Mary, no, you should be able to hear us. Uh, I'm just going to type a message into Mary because uh, you can't hear me at the moment. Um, Mary. Um, 
It's because send privately. Okay, it's two minutes past the top of the hour. We're going to wait one more minute. We've got loads of people coming into the webinar. I understand it can sometimes uh, take a few minutes, especially if you've not used GoToWebinar before, um, to um, install the little uh, applets and things in your browsers in order to get in and actually view the presentation. So we're going to give it one more minute, um, and then we will make a start. So it looks like most of our audience today are in the USA, which is probably what we expected. It's uh, it's 6 p.m. here in the UK, so everybody's off home, or in my case, off to the pub, but not for another hour. Okay, Tom, um, I think we've got most of the people in now. It's three minutes past the top of the hour. I'll hand things over to you, but I'll just on just on the before you start, Tom. Sorry, just on the housekeeping side of things. I think um, ah, good. Mary can hear us now. Fantastic. Um, on the housekeeping side of things, uh, Tom's going to be running through the presentation today. Feel free to type questions in at any point during the presentation. I will attempt to answer the questions as we're going along. So I'll be typing in and answering your questions. So as soon as you think of something, type it in. We'll have a, an open question and answer session at the end as well. Um, and if we've got some really good questions that have come up during the presentation, um, we will uh, attempt to answer those. Hello, Tanya in Northern VA. I presume that's, no, I have no idea. You can tell me where that is, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut up now. I'll hand over you to, to you, Tom. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Mike. Uh, as Mike stated, my name is Tom Tate, and I run uh, Gomo here in North America, and I am in sunny Cumming, Georgia, which is just a little bit uh, about 40 miles north of Atlanta, and I know that Mike said it was 23 degrees here, and uh, we don't do the metric system here too much, so uh, it is actually around 77 degrees Fahrenheit, so people maybe can understand that a little bit better. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, so today we're going to talk about microlearning, your new sales strategy, and microlearning really isn't anything new. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's really been around for a long time. Um, but first, before we get into that, uh, let's define really what microlearning is, uh, and then we'll go ahead and revisit the past. <clears throat> so, what really is microlearning? And there's really all kinds of definitions all over the internet, but they all really kind of you know, kind of go down to the basic thing. Uh, microlearning is targeted learning in bite-sized chunks that focus on a specific product, feature, or service in easy-to-consume learning modules. Okay, so now going back to the past uh, about microlearning. I'm, and when I went to college, I went to college back in the late 80s. I'm sure most of you will remember those little books you can get, say, Cliff Notes on them, <clears throat> where you used flashcards. Uh, you know, they were small books that were filled with bite sized chunks of really the main topic that we were trying to learn. And so that was, for the most part, in its time, microlearning. And it just seems that recently it's become one of the newest buzzwords that's hitting the learning industry today. You see it all over the place. Uh, and I think really a part of that is that our technology has finally caught up with what true micro real learning really should be. Quick, small, and on demand. So let's start out and we'll talk a little bit about what challenges face the modern learner today and why micro learning is helping to address those challenges. Uh, after that, we'll then explore a bit as to how you can find the right tool to create and distribute those courses. And you'll see an example of a microlearning course that was created uh, using GOMO, our authoring tool, uh, in just a few hours. And then finally, if we have some time, uh, I'll give you a brief demonstration of the tool, and then we'll finally wrap it up with uh, questions from everybody. Again, don't uh, don't stop. You know, don't, feel free to ask any questions as we're going along, and Mike will be able to uh, answer those for you. <clears throat> so, what challenges are facing uh, the modern learner today? Certainly, there are a number of challenges that face the modern learner, but I've listed six of them here, and you're probably wondering what these numbers mean. And hopefully, once I click on them, it'll you'll break it down and you'll understand a little bit better. But 41. So, what is 41? That's actually the percentage of time that workers spend on things that really offer little personal satisfaction and don't help them get their work done. They could be mundane tasks such as answering emails, sitting through a boring conference call like this guy, 
uh, although I'm sure that uh, none of you have ever been in one of those, have you? So a lot of those things can really help bog you down and make it a challenge for you. Uh, Two-thirds. This is the number of knowledge workers that say they just don't have enough time to do their job. You know, my workday personally starts uh, when I wake up. I'm in bed, and being that I'm in the U.S. and most of my colleagues are in the U.K., I have a phone full of emails that I go through and, and around 6.30 in the morning, and then I generally don't stop answering my emails until I go to bed. So we're all very busy, and I'm sure most of you can relate to this, but it's, it's tough to get all your work done in the time that we have allocated for it. Four. That's the, really the number of minutes a video can be in length before most people start to tune it out. Um, so let's face it, we've all had to take learning before and be forced to watch a video. Generally, what's the first place your eyes go when it starts up? Bottom corner to see how long it's going to be. And you've probably all grown when you see something that's 12, 15, or even worse, 30 minutes long. So nine. This is the number of times that the average, and I'm doing invisible air quotes here, average person unlocks their smartphone per hour. Now, I uh, don't know about you, but this seems kind of low to me. Uh, of course, I've got multiple email accounts on my phone. I've got other apps that will give me different notifications. Each one has a different sound or alert. So I feel like that I'm constantly unlocking my phone to see what just came in. So that's a distraction, which actually brings me to my next point. Every five minutes, Workers get interrupted while trying to do their job. Um, so online chats, your phone chiming at you, help calls, other calls, it can be a bit frustrating, as I'm sure most of you can relate to. And 5 to 10. This is the number of seconds you actually have to grab someone's attention before they click away or lose interest. And this just really isn't with e-learning. It's most likely with anything. Uh, Jakob Nielsen who's sort of a uh, guru when it comes to website usability. He was writing about this before the year 2000, and it is really with anything, uh, including this webinar. So hopefully we've got your attention and you're, uh, you're learning something already. So that was just some of the challenges that face the modern learner. And I'm sure some of you are saying to yourselves that there are other things that are a challenge as well. And it really could be endless. But not only are there challenges facing the modern learner throughout the advancement of technology, there are other things that have changed the learner as well. So in this next page, we'll go ahead and explore some of those attributes uh, of today's modern learner. They're untethered. So first and foremost, people are untethered. People just don't work from a desk or an office anymore. They are literally untethered. Employees are finding uh, more ways to accommodate those different lifestyles but they're finding it difficult to reach those uh, employees consistently as well as to develop them the way they'd like to. By the end of this year, as many as 44% of the global workforce is expected to be mobile, with 31% of those full-time employees doing the work somewhere other than the employer's location. And 20% of today's workforce is really made up of people who are temporary or they're contractors or they're freelancers. Employees are also empowered, and unfortunately this means that many people feel that they're not getting the training or learning that they need from their employees, or excuse me, yes, from their employers, and really have to go out and find it on their own. So also, that forces people to work collaboratively. They access both personal and professional networks to be able to get that information that they're looking for within their industry. And 80% of the learning actually happens on the job. So we do live in an on-demand world where we want immediate access. Uh, once people are trained, they need to keep using those skills or they lose them. Generally, two and a half to five years is the half-life in years a person keeps their professional skills until they lose them. I personally went and paid for myself the training to become uh, an MCSE back in uh, 2000. And I thought it would really help me in the industry that I was in at the time. I worked in a corporate IT department. Um, I haven't used those skills in probably 15 years, and I've probably lost about 95% of what I've learned. So 38% of workers say that they have opportunities for learning and growth at their workplace. And that number actually seems kind of low to me. I bet that many of the 62% that feel they don't have opportunities simply don't know they exist or where to look for them. And then 62% of IT professionals have said that they have paid for additional training, I can relate to that, out of their own pockets. 
So with all the things that we've talked about, you can see that more and more people are finding it difficult to find any time at all to take any learning courses. As a matter of fact, um, employees are finding that they only have a very, very small sliver of time. So let me ask everybody here a question, and you can fill in the, in the question box. Uh, would anybody care to guess what percentage of time people actually have during their 40-hour work week uh, to take learning? Go ahead and type in a percentage in the uh, in the box that Michael will relay it to us. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me? I can. Fantastic. We've got some answers coming in, and um, yeah, interesting uh, range of answers. So two percent. Uh, I've actually got three people suggesting two percent. So. Uh, quite a bit of coincidence there, I guess. Uh, we've got people saying 30 minutes. Um, some people must work at uh, very informed employers. We've got 5, 10%, and we've got 10 to 20 minutes. So uh, I think the average is coming out, Tom, at uh, you know, sort of 2% up to a high of 10%, and uh, uh, 10 minutes to 30 minutes is, is typically what people seem to be saying on the answer box. Tom, we seem to have lost your audio. Oh, sorry about that. The uh, button got pressed accidentally. Where, did you hear my, my answer? No. Okay, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the answer turns out to be uh, less than 1%, or just about 1% of your time available for learning. Um, and that's really not a lot of time at all. And that actually translates to less than five minutes in a 40-hour work week. I think it's actually around four minutes and 50 seconds, which ironically is about the length of time to take an average micro-learning course. So maybe that's a coincidence, maybe it's not. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Uh, so there are six major benefits of micro-learning, and I've seen probably some other benefits too. Uh, but these are some of the benefits that we've come up with to, to realize why microlearning can be beneficial. First and foremost, uh, it is targeted. So microlearning courses are going to be specific to just one product or feature. That means if you sell, like on the picture here, maybe blenders, and you have the best blender on the market for any number of reasons. Maybe it's the Japanese steel blades forged by Samurai Blacksmith, or maybe it's an eight power horsepower motor that can chop up ice in just seconds. Whatever it is, you're going to focus the training on just one of those features and only talk about the selling points of your motor, maybe, or maybe just the blades. Additionally, they can be used as a really quick refresher to reinforce what someone may have already learned. With short courses, the time is going to be spent learning and not searching for what you're trying to learn. Um, I've been, you know, I've worked for large organizations before too, and you know, there's sometimes the learning would be out there. I'd have to go search for a specific course, and it would sometimes take me 10, 15 minutes to drill down into the course just to find that little nugget that I'm looking for. Well, this is that little nugget. It's that micro learning that allows you to learn that really quick. Fills the gap. So a lot of times you've got spare time. You're waiting in line at lunch. You're in the elevator. You uh, uh, are in your car. So let's say, for example, you get to a sales meeting. You're 20 minutes early. Uh, a real quick four-minute course on your product's key benefits over your competitors really just might be the difference in you walking out of you with a signed contract or not. So really good for filling that time gap. Increased completion rates. So this goes back to when I mentioned about looking up how long a video is. Have you ever been assigned to taking a course and they say it's going to take about an hour or 90 minutes? Like me, people delay taking it for as long as they can because honestly they just don't have the time. But if you take that course and you deliver it in short modules of five minutes here, five minutes there, it's really a lot easier pill to swallow. So that brings me on to the next point. They need to be easily accessible 
and easily accessible means mobile friendly. Fast and easy, on demand, just in time, filling that gap. These are all reasons why your microlearning has to be mobile friendly. Courses need to be created in an HTML5 that is adaptive and responsive. So having an authoring tool like Gomo means that you can create beautiful microlearning courses that are going to play on all device types without the need for creating that same course multiple times for each device. Now another nice thing about the, the microlearning is you will get increased retention. It's a whole lot easier if you're going to try to retain one to three things that you read about or watch a video on in five minutes than it is to try to remember a whole slew of things you read or heard about in an hour. There have been studies that have shown that adults, especially modern adults to now, with all the technology that's come out, is they can retain information better when it's given to them in short bursts. A real quick review of a specific product or feature uh, before your sales team meets with a client can really help to boost your confidence and allow for better communication during the meeting. If we think back to your childhood, I can remember um, I had a head full of phone numbers, all of my friends, my family. I remembered all those. Now I'm lucky if I can remember my own phone number because everything is available to me in the palm of my hand on my phone, so I don't retain things nearly as well as I used to. And then last, they're easy to update. If you've invested in the right kind of an authoring tool, updates to those courses can literally take 30 seconds to a couple of minutes to implement and then publish. No longer are you having to thumb through a 75-page course, uh, zipping it up, uploading it back up to the LMS. If you've got the right tool, you can push out those product updates uh, or a real quick sales spiff in just a couple of minutes. All right, so now that we've learned about why we should be considering microlearning and how it benefits us, let's take a real quick look at a microlearning course. And I'll just go ahead and uh, make my screen a little smaller. I've already got this course loaded up on another screen. There we go. Hopefully you can see it. So this is a course, a very small microlearning course on how to create a mint julep celebration of the Kentucky Derby that was just run uh, using Maker's Mark Bourbon. Now a lot of times these courses are going to be accessed via a tablet or a smartphone. You might be at a party, someone says, hey Tom or hey Mike, why don't you make one of those fancy mint juleps and you don't remember how to do it, you can pull up your phone and open up a, a learning class real quick. So here we can start the course. Uh, immediately we can take a look at the contents and we can go through the steps or I can just look at a video right here. In fact, let's just go ahead and watch this video. And there's some uh, music going on in the background, so gives you all the ingredients, splash this water, crushed ice, powdered sugar, mint, maker's mark. First thing we got to do is we have to muddle the mint and pour in the simple syrup. And then finally, we're going to add that muddled mixture to a cup and fill it with ice. Add that maker's mark and distilled water. Top it off with powdered sugar and garnish it with a mint and enjoy. Now, that's one way we can watch this uh, micro learning. But if we wanted to actually take it and go step by step by step, First of all, we have a screen here that tells us all the specific ingredients. It's flashing us some special information right here. We've got a couple things here. Maker's Mark is the number one most important ingredient, so we make sure we have that. And we also want to make sure that we have fresh mint, which is going to be that second most important ingredient. Then we can go through step by step. Now, if we want to see what this looks like, maybe on a phone, we'll just shrink down the browser here. And then again, of course, you can see how everything adjusts. So we can now go to step two. We're going to add the muddled mixture to our cup. And we're going to fill that cup with ice. We're done with that. Now we can just swipe on our phone, go to the third step. Now we're going to add our maker's mark and our distilled water. And we can swipe again and go to step three. And we'll top it off with powdered sugar and garnish it with that fresh mint. And then you can pass on that beautiful drink to your friends. But if we wanted to go on a little bit further, we could have another option to watch the video here. Uh, we could even take a little assessment to see if we've learned anything today. 
So there's the beautiful Maker's Mark uh, distillery in the background. <clears throat> so in what part of the country is the mint julep famous? Uh, we talked about the Kentucky Derby and horse races, and obviously it's very famous in the south. And yeah, I want a cocktail. I'll have to wait a few more hours for that. And then name the two most important ingredients in a Maker's Mark mint julep. Well, I remember those pop-ups that told us we needed to make sure we had fresh Maker's Mark bourbon and fresh mint. And absolutely spot on, as I should be. And of course, I passed this with a 100%. Thank you very much. All right. So, after all this, hopefully you may be thinking that, hmm, this all looks great. Do you have any suggestions on what tool I can use to create microlearning? Well, obviously we are GOMO. We are hosting this webinar. So we certainly think that GOMO is the perfect tool to uh, create your microlearning. So who is GOMO and what are we? Well, first off, we think that we are the world's leading cloud-based responsive HTML5 e-learning authoring tool that also has integrated hosting and analytics. Uh, we also have a app that can deliver that content offline on both Android devices as well as Apple devices. So now I'll go ahead and go to some additional information here. So some of you might be thinking, great, that's, that's nice about GOMO, but who really uses GOMO? GOMO is used by a lot of global organizations. Uh, you don't have to be a global organization. We have a lot of people that are small regional companies or even uh, individual developers that are using GOMO. Uh, a lot of the features and functionality of, the GOMO, of GOMO just really works well with a lot of these global organizations. We have won uh, some awards, uh, Brandon Hall Gold for the Advance in Content Authoring Technology. Uh, Craig Weiss, who's one of the e-learning industry's top gurus, has ranked GOMO as one of the top five authoring tools in the world. And also, Training Industry Magazine just recently recognized us as a top 20 company as well. And finally, the Fossway Group, an uh, analytical company over in Europe, has given us the top right quadrant right here, which states that we are the leading core leader. Uh, for the authoring systems. And who are we, actually? Well, we are part of a larger group. We are part of the Learning Technologies group of companies. Some of the other companies are Leo, which is a content development firm based out of New York, Rio, and London, so they build custom content. Uh, Euclea builds uh, custom content for uh, compliance training for the banking industry. Uh, Preloaded creates games with purpose. They make some fantastic virtual reality games, uh, augmented reality, just really nice games for learning. Rust to see might be a name you're familiar with. They're the ones that look after SCORM, so they make sure all these authoring tools and all these learning management systems all talk to each other with SCORM compliance. They're also the ones that developed uh, XAPI Analytics Tin Can. So a lot of their technologies, as they come out with it, find their way into GOMO first. Uh, they're also a, uh, about a 30% share in Watershed, which is also coming into the back end of uh, GOMO. And then most recently, also this year, we have acquired Net Dimensions, uh, which is a learning management system, and a fine one at that. So what do we offer? Well, GOMO offers two things. We offer, first and foremost, an authoring tool for you to develop your, your content. And then we also offer hosting. So you might not have a big, giant LMS, and you need to find a real quick, easy way to be able to distribute that content. If you have both of those together, you actually have the GOMO Learning Suite. And so what makes us different? Well, GOMO first and foremost produces responsive and adaptive HTML5 content. You don't have to create the, the same course multiple times to go on multiple different devices. Just create it once and the player will automatically read the screen size and adjust accordingly. So here's some examples of that actually. Top left here is a course that was created in GOMO and it's being displayed on a Windows-based laptop an iPad mini, and an Android Google Nexus phone. You can see the text is big and readable there, it's big and readable there, and it's also big and readable there. 
Now these other two examples here, they are responsive HTML5, they do fill the screen, but what they do is they don't adapt to the size of the screen it is, and they actually shrink it down to fit on a phone, shrink it down on the top third of a tablet to fit there, and what you're going to get with that unfortunately are small text on a phone, you might get buttons that are going to be small, people might fat finger them, put the wrong answers, click on the wrong thing, and really make for a poor learning experience. Uh, and this poor guy down here in the bottom right, not really sure what's going on with them. They can't even uh, turn the tablet to portrait mode, and it's not even coming up on the phone. It's getting error messages. So with GOMO, you eliminate all these problems. Running through a quick Google analysis test. Mobile friendliness, 100 out of 100, and then 99 out of 100 for desktop and mobile speed. All three things, obviously very important. We are cloud-based, so there is nothing to download, no IT department you got to go through and get approval, no installations, full collaboration, full online review. And again, if you don't have an LMS, or maybe you just want to have multiple different ways that you can distribute your learning, get it out to them very, very quickly. We offer the integrated hosting and analytics, and they are XAPI analytics. And we'll talk a little bit more about the XAPI in a second. <clears throat> so we also now have the GOMO Central app for Android and iOS. So you might have some people that say, you know, I've got to take this course. I'm going to be offline, or I'm going to be on a plane that doesn't have Wi-Fi, or I'm going to be camping with... Uh, you know, my kids this weekend, I need to take this course. They can just simply download the GOMO Central app to their tablet or phone. Once they log in to GOMO Central, they can see all the courses that are available to them and they can download for viewing later on. Then when they're offline, they can open the course, they can take the course, they can consume all the content, they can watch the videos, take the quizzes, do everything that they would normally be able to do, even if they were online. And then once they're finished, the next time they're online, it'll actually send all the uh, statistics and analytics up to the server so you can get all those full analytics. So this is sort of a 50,000 foot view. We have the authoring tool on the left. We have the hosting on the right. Uh, again, it is in the cloud, so all you need is a computer with uh, internet connection and a browser, and you can immediately start building content. You can collaborate. Anyone in the world can log in with, to your account, as long as they have a license, obviously, and you can both be creating the same uh, content on the, on the, at the same time. You just can't be in the same topic, but you can easily build content together and collaborate. Uh, no longer do you have to send emails back and forth or, or throw a, a, a document onto a shareware server somewhere and it gets all convoluted and messy. All you need to do is log in, click on the tasks, assign a task to the, to the author to say, look, on this particular slide, I think you need to move this over to here or you misspelled this particular word. It identifies the slide and the topic that you're in and you can assign it to the author that you need to have. Very, very easy, nice and clean workflow. And then finally, once you're done, if you want to put this on your LMS, any SCORM 1.2 LMS, just wrap it up, GOMA will publish it, and you can upload it to that LMS for distribution. But if you really want to be able to unleash the power of GOMO and look at all the different distribution methods, we can come over here and take a look here. Now, the most popular thing that we have is our GOMO LMS wrapper. And what this does is, you know, typically when you have a course and you're done with it, especially if you have a lot of video or so, it could be 150, 200 megabytes. So what you do is you, you're done reviewing with it, you publish it, it zips it up into a zip file, you then have to FTP it up to your LMS, and a lot of our larger organizations have a quarantine that it has to go through in IT uh, to make sure there's no dangerous scripts or anything, and that can sometimes be as long as three weeks before it finally goes live. Sure enough, you get it live, what happens? Oh no, I put the wrong video in here, or I misspelled this particular person's name, I gotta go back and fix it. You've gotta go through the process all over again. Log into GOMO, make the correction, zip it up, FTP it, go through quarantine, wait, finally live again. But what the GOMO LMS wrapper does 
is it takes that 150 or 200 megabyte course and it scrunches it down and creates a microfile and that microfile does have a SCORM wrapper on it. It looks like SCORM, it tracks like SCORM, but it's only about 13 kilobytes and that's what you send up to your LMS and you only send it up there one time. And so what that does is it creates a link back to the live course that's on Gomo servers. So if you have that same situation where, oh, no, you got the wrong video or you misspelled this word, no longer do I have to go through that long, arduous process. I just log into Gomo, make the changes, save it, publish to Gomo, done. So you can upload all those changes very, very quickly, 30 seconds. To two minutes depending on how large the course is and this has really been excellent for one of our customers Burberry because they had about a three-week process and they would if they were going to be coming up with a sales flyer and they had to send information out to all of their, their employees in the retail outlets all this information they had to build these courses and get them done at least three to four weeks prior to them going live now with GOMO they can go all the way up to the minute and make changes <clears throat> in two or two, two or three minutes saving them countless hours and thousands of dollars. Other clients of ours that have multiple LMSs all over the world, you upload that LMS wrapper file to all seven or eight different LMSs, you can update, update them all dynamically at the exact same time. Also, it will track on your LMS the SCORM tracking, <clears throat> but it will also track XAPI analytics because it is on GOMO servers. So, the XAPI analytics are going to really kind of peel back that layer just a little bit more. It's going to give you the true path that the learner takes. It's going to give you statistics as to how many people are using desktop versus tablet versus phone, how many times it was launched, how many times was it completed. It'll also give you the path that the person took to take the course. They experienced the main menu, they went to this slide, they watched the video, they listened to this audio track, they took the quiz, and not only did they take the quiz and pass it, but they missed question number seven and they got all the rest of them correct. If you see the, a pattern developing where everybody's missing question number seven, maybe you need to go in and take a look to say, gosh, I programmed the answer wrong, or maybe I've got content in here that's just confusing and people are getting the wrong answer. So you can take those analytics and help you to make your courses better. So also other options for distribution <clears throat> is GOMO Central. You know, a lot of our customers are taking this and delivering uh, onboarding training to a lot of their new hires. Maybe they don't have a corporate email yet. Uh, now, GOMO Central is not an LMS. We have no plans to make it an LMS. It's just a portal that you can go in to get the content if you need to. And also through GOMO Central, you do have the GOMO Central app. We do also create an embed code. So a lot of times we have customers that want to create uh, learning for their customers. Maybe you're a manufacturer and you have to to uh, it's you have to put something together they create courses on how to put something together or how to program something uh, the embed code is just code that gomo creates for you you copy that paste it into your html and voila the course will appear on your internet or intranet site whichever you prefer and then finally we also create uh, direct link access um, both for open and ssl so you can facebook it tweet it youtube it Instagram, Pinterest, whatever you want to do, uh, you can create a direct link. So that is the preview of GOMO. So now it is it is 135 or 35 past the hour, so we have some time, and we're going to go in and actually see the tool and how it works. <coughs> so this is GOMO, which you usually see when you log in. We've got lots of different projects here, and I'll just go ahead and create a new project. And it is Tuesday at 1.35. You can put a description, uh, resource folders where all your uh, images and PDFs and videos are going to go. You can select a project folder, and you can select what language. We do offer multiple languages, uh, and they will report back as a single SCO. So you can have multiple languages embedded into a single course. You can then select a theme, and themes are separate from the content. Uh, they actually control the look and feel of your course. Uh, a lot of our customers have us create custom themes for them. Um, Santander, Nike, Bueller, um, and of course here's Burberry up here. They have very specific look and feel with specifically rounded buttons. But the nice thing about the themes is because they are separate from the content, you can create, let's say, 
you know, 500 courses, and let's say you're a bank, and all of a sudden you merge with another bank, because gosh, that never happens, does it? You have to change your logo, maybe you have to change your colors, maybe you're using a different font, and traditionally you would have to go into those 500 courses, which might have, you know, 50 to 100 pages each, and make all those changes, which could be just forever. But if you're using GOMO and you have the theme, all you need to do is just go into the master theme, make the changes, add your new colors, add your new logo, and every single course that was created using that theme will automatically change dynamically. You don't have to go in and do any other work. They'll all change. So we'll just choose material design. Now we can choose, I don't need an introduction topic. Uh, let's see, I have an exit button, don't need accessibility. All right, so this is where we can choose my colleagues that uh, are going to be uh, on the course with me. I can either turn them on or off, and if they turn off, then they cannot come in and see these projects, and we have several different layers of protection. So while this is completing making my course, I'll come in and show you maybe just a few other courses that were created using GOMO, so you can kind of get an idea for the different styles and looks and feels that you can create. So Jaguar Land Rover have created courses for all of their different vehicles. They have these on tablets, on iPads, at their dealerships. What they found out was a lot of people were coming in, <clears throat> they knew a lot about the cars, they were quizzing the, uh, the salespeople, the salespeople had to say, well, let me find out for you, but now they have all the information at their fingertips on their tablets on all the various vehicles that they sell. So that's one nice look and feel. Uh, this is another course that was created uh, about Mazars, and this course actually utilizes a different type of navigation that we offer. Uh, we offer several different types of scrolling when it comes to our courses. You have horizontal, you have vertical, and then you also have a continuous scroll where I'm just using my wheel on my mouse here. Uh, all very, very good looking. And so this one, here, pop up. So a little different look and feel there. Here's one done for Appleton rum, good stuff. This one they chose not to take up the full screen. Now the screen that I am on that you're seeing now is actually about a 24 inch Samsung monitor. Uh, they looks like they chose to be about 1024. And so a nice another little look and feel here. So that should give you guys some ideas of the different look and feel of different courses. All right, so here is the course that I created with our menu and our three topics. Uh, this is a, uh, a tree view. There is also a list view where you can look at it by folders, but most people that I know of really like the, uh, the tree view. We have our header information at the top along with our footer information down at the bottom. I can remove this item and put it at the top if I like. And I went ahead and opened up this topic right here so you could kind of see that if somebody else were to come into this course to work on it, I would have it locked so they can't go in here and overwrite anything that I'm doing. They can go into any of the other topics that I've got here and start doing some, uh, some building. So what does the tool actually look like? Uh, so this is the tool, very, very easy to use. It's intuitive. I can a lot of you know right click, delete this screen. Uh, everything I click on over here is going to have its properties to the right. Uh, if I wanted to type in some text here, let's just see. Welcome to Gomo. Notice I don't have to worry about the color of the font, the size of the font, the style of the font. Uh, it's all going to be controlled for me by the theme. If I wanted to go in and make changes to that theme, I could do that, which we'll show you here in a little bit. But maybe I want to change images out. Again, I can simply just double click on this image, browse out and upload one if I wanted to, or I can go back to my resources, look in a specific folder, do a search by a keyword, or if I want to look for it visually, I just change the thumb view, and then now I can choose uh, which image I'd like to put here. I think I'll also put it here in the center, and that's good for that page. Uh, maybe I want to create another screen. You can create blank screens where you can then build it up yourself, or we've actually created some template screens for you. This is going to save you quite a bit of time. So here's one for a hotspot image, and we'll just say, talk a little bit about our offices. 
And let's see, go out and I'll grab a map here. I think we have a world map down here. Yes, we do. There it is. Now, this automatically links to three subscreens that are automatically created for us. So I'm going to link to one that's going to be called Brighton because that's where Mike is. And we'll just come in here and we'll say Brighton. And that is actually where our corporate headquarters is. And so maybe if none of you have ever been to Brighton or you don't know what it looks like, uh, I think we've got a picture of a bridge here, which is right from, I think Mike can see this from the office, can't you, Mike? I can indeed. I'm just looking over my shoulder. Fantastic. All right. So let's see. We'll go in and create something for New York. All right, and then we will put in an image of New York. All right. And we'll put this in the center. And maybe we'll put some animation with this as well. Let's maybe make it whirl in, and we'll do it for one second. And then we'll make this a pop-up as well. All right, so now we'll go ahead and we will create one more screen and we'll do this from a template and we will create one for an assessment. Maybe we'll test this on where our offices are. So we'll do a multiple choice question. All right, and then we'll just say, where are our corporate offices? Where are our corporate offices? Question mark. And then we'll just come in here. We have the ability to choose from one attempt or give everybody two attempts. We'll be nice and actually give them two attempts. And we'll say the first option is going to be New York. And the next one is going to be Atlanta. And the last one is going to be Brighton. That's going to be the correct answer. And we'll make sure that's correct. That's incorrect. And we'll apply that, and we will also kind of mess with people, and we'll maybe put in a, let's put in a video here. And we'll put one in New York Jam, that will confuse everybody. And then we need to go back and then finish out this hotspot image. So here is our first hotspot, and we'll just drag this and put this over New York, or excuse me, London, or uh, Brighton. And this one we'll just leave out over here. Now, these are going to automatically go to that subscreen that we created. And we can, of course, change that, or we can even add additional actions here. We can uh, play an audio asset. We can set a certain variable. We can show a different screen. So really a lot of power under the hood here. Uh, this one should be going to New York automatically, and it is. This one, what we'll do, maybe we'll set it to go to uh, a web link instead. We'll have it go to Gilmo Learning. So we'll do that. Confirm. All right, so now we'll just go ahead and save this, and then we can go ahead and do a preview of what our course is going to look like. Now, if anybody has any uh, a screen or a, a QR reader for your phones, go ahead and maybe get that ready, because I am going to display this again here in just a second. Bear with me. And now we can go in and just do a real quick preview of what our project looks like. So when it comes up, we will be able to see not only what is it going to look like on uh, a desktop, but we'll also be able to see what's it going to look like on a smartphone, on a tablet, on landscape view, on uh, um, portrait view. So here's our topic. Welcome to GoMo. Here's my logo I put in. Here are our hotspots. And New York, rolling in. And then we have our... I think I don't know what I do with my other hotspot is around here somewhere. I may have I must didn't pay attention to where I put that, but it'll be over here somewhere. I'll have to look here in a second. And then last but not least, we have our quiz. We have our little video we can play. Where are our corporate offices? And of course, they are in Brighton, and we are correct. So that's what our course looks like. Uh, we can now also test it to see uh, what it looks like on a tablet and what it looks like in landscape mode as well as portrait mode. 
And the other thing is I can check a smartphone. Now one thing I want to point out is this, you know, a lot of these uh, tools that are mobile friendly, you know, they're not adaptive. They're going to be responsive and what they'll do is they'll shrink this down and these two columns will still be right next to each other. But what I do when I go to a smartphone is that this will read the fact that it's on a smartphone screen and adjust and adapt and move underneath this particular column. So we still have nice finger friendly buttons here. The video is still a good size that we can watch on a smartphone. The button is still going to be finger friendly. We still have a finger friendly button here to go look at our table of contents if we need to. So very, very friendly uh, to mobile. So obviously there's a lot more things I could show you on the authoring side, uh, but I told you we'd go and talk a little bit about themes and customizing the themes. So one thing that's interesting is this particular theme that we use, which is called Material Design. It's one of the newest themes that we got uh, for GOMO. Uh, it is also the most customizable of all the themes. As a matter of fact, the presentation that I gave today on microlearning was created using the Material Design theme, and then I came in and made changes to the theme itself. Also, the Maker's Mark course, it was also created using the Material Design theme where I was able to go in and make some changes. So let's say we want this to be 1024 pixels instead of 100% of the desktop. Now, it will always be 100% of a screen for a phone or a tablet. Maybe I want to tone down these colors just a little bit so they're not so, uh, not so crazy. Maybe I want to uh, get rid of this uh, background, something that's not quite so colorful. Uh, so a little story about the uh, the color uh, of all the, uh, the the screen here with all the, the Google looking colors. Let me see if I can find the specific one I'm looking for. Let's see. Oh, here it is, Jenny. So here's also where you can change the fonts and everything like that. But a little story about the color of the Google colors that you see. Uh, Google has put out some um, design techniques or some design tips on the best for creating mobile friendly design. And so that's how we really designed this theme was around a lot of those uh, tips on making things um, uh, very friendly for mobile. So we kind of paid a homage to Google with those colors. So before I go in and check the what I've done to change it here is that QR code so if anybody has the QR reader on their phone or tablet I will give you uh, just a few seconds here hopefully you can zap that <clears throat> and then you'll it'll appear on your phone and since I've now gone in and I've changed the theme uh, I will be able to go in and refresh the screen and we should be able to see those design changes uh, different background image you'll see the uh, uh, changes the color of the buttons will be a little bit different uh, and it'll also only be at 1024 versus taking up the whole screen. So there we go, a little bit more toned down, a little nicer background image. Now if you have a, uh, if you did pull the course up on your phone uh, or tablet, you can now refresh your browser on your phone or tablet and you will immediately see the, uh, the changes that we made to uh, this particular course. All right, so that's uh, just some of the things that you can do with changing the theme. Um, now, one other little thing we'll do is I'll change roles instead of being a developer. Let's say that now I'm a reviewer and I've been assigned to be uh, reviewing this particular course. We have this tasks tab over here. And if I click on that, I can now go in and say I need to add a new task. So it's going to identify the topic that I'm in. Uh, whatever you've named it, it will show up here. Uh, I am on the multiple choice question off of a template. And I can assign this to Mike because he's not doing anything right now. So I can say, go ahead and make this full screen and change the color of the header and footer. I can create that, and then the next time that Mike logs in, he can go to his tasks, and he can see based on what project he's in, who it's assigned to, see what it is that I've asked him to do, and then he can immediately go in and make those changes, or he can reject them and let me know why. 
So that is just about it for our demonstration with the authoring and the reviewing. Now I know we went over in quite a bit of detail all of the distribution methods, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a real quick look at the hosting side. Mm -hmm. So we have Gomo Central here. Uh, the learning portal can be set up in as little as 10 minutes by adding your logos, uh, background image. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want people to log in, allow them to register, and of course you can create user groups uh, and access groups and things like that. Uh, for your projects, these are all been published to GOMO. Uh, the other options that you have obviously are to um, publish it with a direct link. This is Get Going with GOMO. It's a uh, course that we created to put on our help part of our site and the support. It's been launched a little over 2,600 times. Um, and if I click on direct access, there is the embed code that it creates that we can embed it to our website. There is the direct link access. And then finally, very quickly here, uh, I will show you all how you can create the uh, GOMO LMS wrapper. So here's a, eh, not a large course, but it's not small, it's 41 megabytes. And instead of having to zip it up and FTP it up to my LMS, I uh, want to maybe create the uh, GOMO LMS wrapper. So all I need to do is go into settings, choose the LMS wrapper, download the package, then less than a tenth of a second. It has created that package for me. I'll go over here and go to my downloads, and there is the course right there, 13 kilobytes, very, very small. It has the IMS manifest, everything you need to throw on your LMS, but now once you've put that on your LMS one time, you never have to upload anything again for this course. Just go into GOMO, make the saves, publish it to GOMO, and you're good to go. So I think at that point, I know we're running a little bit low on time. We've got uh, just about five minutes or so. I'll turn it over to Mike and see what kind of questions have come in and uh, hopefully answer those questions for everyone. Hi, Tom. Thank you for that. Thanks, everyone, for spending the time with us this afternoon. A couple of questions. Uh, Tom, can you hear me okay? I'm on a 4G connection now, so I just want to check. I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Okay, so a couple of questions that have been coming in. Um, first one, what is the format uh, of the GOMO courses? Um, so to answer that one, GOMO outputs um, responsive and adaptive HTML5 content by default. So um, you build your courses in GOMO and they're 100% HTML5. There's no flash, there's no plugins, there's no downloads. Uh, they're going to run in all the modern browsers and of course they'll run on all uh, the modern uh, devices. Um, next question is on the themes. Um, some ni nice interest on the themes there. Um, can we configure the themes ourselves? That was from Michael. The answer is yes, you can, Michael. Uh, out of the box, GOMO comes with um, uh, six or seven themes, and Tom's been playing around a lot with the uh, material design theme, which I play around with a lot. It's my favorite theme at the moment. Um, that's highly configurable. All the themes are highly configurable. We do also have a custom theme development service, so if anybody um, uh, is interested in uh, a custom theme over and above what comes with the standard themes, that's a service that we can provide and we've provided it to Nike, United Healthcare, Volvo, Jaguar Land Rover and people like that. Um, and then final question for now because we're running out of time, I'll just have to pick one out of the list, I do apologize to the other people who've been asking questions, um, but um, Peter was asking about um, vertical scrolling um, which seems to be very on vogue with e-learning at the moment and the answer is yes it is. Uh, I think it's a really nice way to present information especially on mobile devices. We're all used to scrolling up and down on our phones and tablets um, and Peter was asking how do we control that and that's, on a, that's under user controls. But the GOMO user chooses how um, the course is going to scroll and, and they can set a default behavior for either the entire course or on a topic by topic basis. So you might want to mix and match. You might have some fairly static topics 
you, know, you want people to sort of swipe through those or click next, click next, click next and, and, and read through and then you might have some sort of browsable topics where you're quite happy for people to sweep their finger up the screen, scroll through and then press their finger down to pause at the appropriate bit of information. That's something we see more and more, so loads of the courses that we're seeing being produced now in GOMO are featuring the deep vertical scrolling. Um, we're running out of time, I'm afraid, Tom, so I think that's it for the questions uh, for now, but uh, I'll hand over back to you, Tom, just to finish off. Thank you, Mike. Um, just so everybody does know that we are going to be publishing a recording of this on our website, uh, typically under our blog. You'll see the uh, recording there that you'll be able to get. Uh, again, my name is Tom Tate, and I pretty much handle anything in North America. My email address is tom.tate.gomolearning.com, and Mike Alcock handles pretty much anything other than North America, and his email is mike.alcock at gomolearning.com. Uh, also, if you go to our website, you can sign up for a 21-day free trial, and it's not uh, just a portion of the uh, the tool it gives you it is a four author uh, demo it gives you everything that anybody that buys the tool so you can try it out uh, so I encourage everyone if you're interested to go and sign up for a free trial uh, email us if you have any questions we're here to help and uh, I sincerely appreciate your interest thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon